Welcome to the Adam Does Movies Podcast. I'm Adam, and today's topic is going to be on comedies, baby. I haven't really talked about it much, so I thought, you know what, why don't we spend 20 minutes or so just diving in, just getting our feet wet and see what comes out underneath. I don't really know if that metaphor worked, but it doesn't matter. You know, with all the sad things in the world, with uh, working two or three jobs, trying to raise a family, trying to get through college or high school or whatever... We're missing something that used to be a lot more prominent, and that's the comedy. That's the movie that would come out what seemed like every week or two that would make you laugh. Whether it's a rom-com, not my biggest thing, but still, they put effort in. Or a parody film, which are completely dead at this point. Or a dark comedy, or an animated comedy. There's so many different options out there, or at least there were, that seem to be gone completely from the world. So yeah, I wanted to spend, you know, a little time just kind of going over. I put together a list. It's not like a best of by any means. It was really just breaking it down by some genres and then just kind of seeing what came to mind since this podcast is supposed to be mostly impromptu. It's supposed to be my thoughts on the fly, just having a chat with you one-on-one. It can get sloppy. I can trip over my words. I can trip over my own thoughts, but for the most part... You know, we try to keep it honest. We try to keep it, uh, we try to keep it buttoned up as best as possible. All right, let's start with the first one. And this is one that's near and dear to my heart, which is, like I said, completely died out. And that's the parody. These are movies that, well, it's a genre that some people probably don't even know exist. If you're under the age of 25, you may not even know what a parody movie is. There are films like The Naked Gun or Monty Python, or Hot Shots, or High School High, or Scary Movie, Spy Hard, Wrongfully Accused. These are mostly movies with Leslie Nielsen, to be honest. He was, he was living good off of those films, and for a good reason. Leslie Nielsen was the king of deadpan humor. There were a couple like him, but he was, he was a freaking legend in the industry. Uh, I love Naked Gun, all three of them. It's a little awkward seeing O.J. Simpson as one of the lead characters, but (laughs) separate. Separate the art from the artist, or whatever you want to call him. These are really funny-ass movies, and the entire point of a parody, which I was going to explain for people that were younger, is they would traditionally play off a lot of different movie tropes, and even pick out scenes from popular films and recreate them in the dumbest way imaginable. The budgets were usually pretty small, but they did a lot with what they had to work with. And the cheapness is kind of what made it funny as well. Because they don't have these big blockbuster effects. They're, they're doing it in a silly, campy way. Really witty dialogue in films like Naked Gun and Hot Shots specifically. Even Hot Shots Part Due. Uh, there's three hot. There, um, there's three Naked Gun films. I think I said Hot Shots twice. I apologize. There's three Naked Gun films. Naked Gun, Naked Gun. I think two and a half, and then thirty three and a third. I might have the numbers wrong. They're completely ludicrous. And then there's only two Hot Shots movies. All five of these though are are just complete gold. High School High came out years later with John Lovitz. Pretty damn funny movie as well. It was kind of making fun of Gangsters Paradise. Oh, no, that's not the name. That's the song. What was that movie called? Dangerous Minds, which featured Gangsters Gangsters Paradise. Gangstas, not gangsters. Again, it's it's, it's tough. It's tough to to stay on task when it's just a one-man army here. These are movies that are near and dear to my heart, though. I watched Naked Gun a stupid amount of times. An immensely quotable film. Before I forget, since I don't have this as one of my numbered items, I do want to shout out Emperor's New Groove on the comedy side of things. There's not a lot of animated films that I think are freaking hilarious, but Emperor's New Groove is. There's definitely animated movies that are funny. A lot of Disney movies have good humor in them, but I think Emperor's New Groove from beginning to end, it's like watching Tommy Boy. It's just this road trip adventure with David Spade and John Goodman. David Spade is a llama. Goodman is this peasant. He's got to 
take the king across the country to get back to his castle so that once he's there, he can destroy John Goodman's property and put out a pool. And along the way, of course, they will learn to see eye to eye and become friends. And it's a whole thing, but it's a great thing. I love Emperor's New Groove. Quick aside, back to Naked Gun, back to the parody films. I like these because, you know, what I would say is most relevant today is Family Guy. Love it or hate Family Guy, it really championed that parody style and made it its own. So in every Family Guy episode, there's a bunch of callbacks to other movies, pop culture references. They do these cutaway jokes, which sometimes work, sometimes don't. The nice thing about Family Guy that really mirrors some of these old school parody flicks is if a joke doesn't land, there is another one right around the corner. And on occasion, some of those older Family Guys, they would hit so many times in a row, you'd end up missing jokes because you'd be laughing so hard. So upon repeat, you get a few more in the, in the chest. That's what happened with Na Naked Gun for me. Every time I'd watch it, I'd find a couple more things, whether it's a background scene, a guy like on fire that I didn't notice before, or something being said under someone's breath. There were just so many little elements that really made the humor stand out. And that's, that's parodies in general. Now, the parody died out because of the jackasses that made the scary movie. One of them... And, and I'm going to botch my history on this. So maybe I should maybe just strike everything I just said. <laughs> All I know is there were several scary movie movies, scary movie movies. One of them was good. The other ones were pretty awful. Then there was not another teen movie. Then there was epic movie, superhero movie, movie, movie. Everything with movie at the end was pretty much garbage. Not another teen movie has moments that are good for sure. It, it's definitely passing barely, but there's a lot of bad spots in that film too. And I think that was the final nail in the coffin of the parody films. After Not Another Teen Movie, that's when we got this whole shovel wears amount of trash in that realm of, you know, oh look, uh, Kim Kardashian's playing Wonder Woman. And it was really nothing more than surface level humor it's not even humor. It's just observations. Like, oh, we got so-and-so, Chef Ramsay's here, and he's dressed up as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. That's the entire... I made that up, but that's the entire joke. There's no punchline. There's no setup. There's no payoff. It's just cultural icon put in, put in as a character, and then they recreate a scene from a film. That's it. That, that's it. And it didn't work. And people got sick of it. And they went away. And it's too bad because it took down some really great, some really great stuff with it. I hope the parody returns at some point, but I think shows like Family Guy is probably as close as we're going to get. I haven't seen Family Guy in many years. I don't know if it's any good anymore. Some people never liked it. I thought it was great. I, I haven't watched because I don't like it. It's just, I, I just haven't found myself... I don't even, is it on Fox still? Is that a thing? Do people still pay for Fox? Do people pay for cable still? <laughs> is, is Family Guy owned by Disney? They must be, right? I can't imagine that's going to be on Disney+. Plus. Oh, I think it's on Hulu. All right, moving on. Another form of comedy is the rom-com. This is the type that I don't really care for. There are some that, that kind of walk between both worlds. They're day walkers. They're both rom-coms and they're... I don't even know what you want to say. College frat movies, just dumb, you know, humor films. I, <laughs> dumb humor fil films. That's a category now. Dumb humor films. Clueless is what I was getting at. That was the long walk that I was taking. Alicia Silverstone, uh, Turk from Scrubs is in there. The dad that's always a dad in everything he's in. I forgot his name. We, I brought this up before, but Clueless is great. Great little flick. What Women Want. Mel Gibson vehicle. Mel Gibson seems to be a crazy individual in real life, but damn, the guy could direct and he could act. He really was very good at what he did on camera. He was, I mean, you could put him in any role. Comedy, action, drama. The dude was freaking talented. 
I don't know what he's doing anymore. It's, I heard they were going to make another lethal weapon at one point. Apparently that ship has failed, which is probably good because I think lethal weapon four tied everything up perfectly. There's no reason to, to again, dust off those bones. How old is freaking Danny Glover at this point? He really is too old for this shit. Now he can say it and really mean it. What Women Want, it's uh, Gibson, it's Helen Hunt, I believe. It's been a long time since I watched it. I just recall thinking, you know what, this is a fine little flick. He's also in a much finer flick, which I have mentioned many times on this, called Maverick. Not to be confused with Tom Cruise's Maverick, the sequel to Top Gun. This Maverick has James Garner, Jodie Foster, Alfred Molina, if I said that name right, the dude, uh, Dr. Octopus. It's, it's a hilarious Western directed by um, Lethal Weapon director Richard Donner. Is that right? Am I getting this name right? Richard Donner, director, IMDb. I have to fact check myself in real time or I'm just going to look foolish. I don't know if he... Yeah, he did. Okay, uh, Richard Donner did Lethal Weapon. He also did Maverick. There's even a callback to Lethal Weapon in Maverick. It's, it's a very nice little humorous moment. Absolutely check that movie out though. Freaking hilarious Western, came out in the mid-90s. It's peak Gibson, it's peak... Well, no, I don't think Jodie Foster has a peak. She'll just continue to peak as long as she lives. She's just a treasure to me. Let me get back to my notes here quick. Okay, I also have... I have, I have some newer ones on there because rom-coms, again, I'm not really into Sweet Home Alabama or... The dramedy style isn't for me that much. But there are some newish ones that came out in the last few years that are pretty good. Palm Springs with Andy Samberg and the How I Met Your Mother, Real Mother at the end. They're in it. It's a Groundhog's Day-esque sort of situation where they, they keep reliving the same freaking day at Palm Springs. It's a terrible title, but they really find each other at the end. It's a nice little flick. I would check it out. And Groundhog's Day is awesome, too. And that's, I guess, a rom-com. I'm glad I got there. Bill Murray, one of the greats. Of course, he's one of the greats. I will talk about some of my favorite comedians at the end, but Bill Murray's definitely on that list. What else do I have under the rom-coms? I have, okay, I have two more. Meet the Parents, Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller Vehicle. Very funny. They made several of them. The first one's really good. I can't speak much to the other two. I saw them. I recall them being incredibly forgettable. I think one of them has Dustin Hoffman in it as his father. They can't flush the toilets. One of the mechanics looks like Ben Stiller, like a Hispanic version, so they're not sure if the kid's his. It, it got really weird in one of them. Meet the Fockers, I think, is the second. Little Fockers, that one's horrible. That, one, that one's terrible, but Meet the Parents is great. A lot of quotable lines. I'm a cat. I'm not, what does he say? I have nipples. Can you milk me? You broke his nose, Fokker. A lot of good lines. Uh, the newest one that came out actually recently. One of the very few that's come out recently. No hard feelings. Jennifer Lawrence. Some boy I've never heard of before. And uh, Ferris Bueller's in this. Matthew Broderick was in an interview not that long ago, and he said, I'll always be known as Ferris Bueller, and he's kind of accepted it at this point. I don't think that's bad. I, I mean, you could be known as much worse. He peaked at Ferris Bueller, to be honest with you. That movie is fucking great. To be regarded as one of the coolest high school students ever put on film, yeah, I think that's probably fine. I think I'd be cool with that. No Hard Feelings, though. One of the rare raunchy comedies we got, I think it came out this year. I'm pretty sure I reviewed it this year. Jennifer Lawrence is hilarious. I always thought she'd be great in, an, uh, in a comedy role. It's amazing to me that she really hasn't been in one up until this point. Because every time I see her on a late show or in an interview, she freaking knocks it out of the park. She's so damn relatable is the joke, but she really is. She's relatable. She's funny as hell. No Hard Feelings was pretty funny too. I, I enjoyed it. Another one from a couple years back with Sandra Bullock, Sandra Bullock, America's Sweetheart. What was that? The Lost City. 
Daniel Radcliffe's in there playing a villain. I loved seeing Daniel Radcliffe in another mainstream movie. He kind of got away from it after Harry Potter because he'd been in the spotlight for so long. He wanted to do more plays, more indie flicks, but it was so good seeing him in a big budget movie again. You got Channing Tatum in here, you got Brad Pitt. I like this movie. I don't think it did very well for critics. I think fans were, were mixed, but I thought it was good. It's very, you know, formulaic. It's, it's very paint by numbers, but I think enough of it worked. I always like seeing Sandra in a film, and I think Brad Pitt is just fantastic. Pitt is another guy that really is a diverse actor. He can do drama, comedy, action roles. It really, the, the pre-Chris Hemsworth, before Marvel realized Chris Hemsworth is funny as hell, and they went all in with that to disappointing degrees, but we'll get there as well. Next on my list of comedy types, I have the raunchy flicks. No Hard Feelings kind of falls into that category as well. Some of them, some of them have broad, you know, appeal. They kind of mix genres a little bit. Animal House is the first one that comes to mind. American Pie right after that. There was an entire trilogy of American Pie films. Actually, I think there was four of them. Uh, the fourth one's not good. The first three, I think, are freaking hilarious. And then there's those terrible spin-off American Pie movies that only seven people watch that went straight to DVD. The American American Pie Presents, The American Mile or something. There were several of those, and I think there were spin-offs with Stifler's brother. If you've, if you've seen the American Pie spin-off films and you're watching this on YouTube, please comment. I would love to know if any of them are any good. I just, I can't imagine they're anything other than trash. Caddyshack, classic. You got Chevy Chase, who's another one of my favorites in the comedy. I mean, he went off the deep end too, got unfunny as he got older, but man, he was a legend back in the day. Uh, Bill Murray's in that. You got uh, Rodney Dangerfield. A lot, of, a lot of good talent in that movie. Hangover and Bridesmaids. These are kind of a nice pairing. They're both... Uh, the boys being boys and the girls being girls type of films. Bradley Cooper on one end of the uh, spectrum with, um, what's the two ferns guy between, Zach Galifianakis. This is the movie that really put Zach Galifianakis on the map for a lot of people. I liked him when he was doing Tim and Eric and some of his random weird shit on Adult Swim. But Hangover was freaking legendary for this guy. And Bradley Cooper, solid actor all around. On the bridesmaid side, uh, side, you have Suki from Gilmore Girls. Melissa McCarthy, take her, her, leave her. I go both ways with Melissa McCarthy. Sometimes I think she really is solid. In Bridesmaids, she is freaking hilarious. Kristen Wiig is in this as well. The only movie Kristen Wiig has done that's not terrible to my recollection. She would go on to do a, a string of pretty bad films like Wonder Woman 84 and the Ghostbusters 2016 reboot. That, that, that was a complete disaster. Melissa McCarthy, though, really good as this character. She's not just playing herself. She's playing a, a freaking hilarious, like, war-torn bridesmaid who, who's really rough around the edges. And I like Hangover a lot, too. The first one. I tried watching the second one not that long ago. I heard it was bad. I wanted to give it a shot. And yeah, it's bad. It, it's, the first half is, is decent, but man, it falls on its face. And I didn't even bother with the third. Dumb humor. This is really where I like to live as far as the comedy genres. Dumb ass humor is my favorite. Movies that are, are borderline parody in nature like Austin Powers and Zoolander. Yeah, I'll take those every day of the week. I love the Austin Powers trilogy. Third one, it's rough, but it's still watchable. You still have Mike Myers being brilliant. You still have Dr. Evil being hilarious. Seth Green, a great, uh, you know, bouncing off straight man to Dr. Evil. A lot of great actors in these movies. They do, you know, obviously play off James Bond, but there's tons of different things, tons of tropes that they wink at and tip the hat to. Zoolander, Ben Stiller is so good when he's writing and directing his stuff. Zoolander, Tropic Thunder, 
cable guy. I'll, I know he's not in it much. He's a cameo. But these movies are really top of the line. And I, I love Stiller. I think he did. Yeah, he had to have done uh, Cable Guy. I'm pretty positive. Well, whatever. You can fact check me later. But for right now, I'm sticking to it. I don't think he did Dodgeball. I think that one he did not write and direct, even though it feels like a Ben Stiller movie. Stiller's got range, too. He plays different types of characters, which I like. He's very much an SNL cast member without, I think, ever actually being on SNL. He did have a short-lived Ben Stiller show back in the day that had some really good skits. The Die Hard one specifically. If you haven't seen the Die Hard skit by Ben Stiller, check it out. He also does a really funny Tom Cruise impersonation. There's a great bonus feature on Mission Impossible 2. Tom Cruise is playing the stunt double... I'm sorry, Ben Stiller is playing the stunt double of Tom Cruise. Perfectly. And Tom Cruise is having a great time. He's in on the joke. It's really fun. Yeah, I love, I love Zoolander. What else do we got on this list? Oh, Happy Gilmore. Adam Sandler, you know, listen, for the longest time, I had a no Adam Sandler policy in this house. After, I think anger management was the final straw for me. He just wasn't doing good movies. He was just phoning shit in. Billy Madison was great. Happy Gilmore is brilliant. It's one of my favorite comedies. Austin Powers is up there too. The next one I'll, I'll bring up. Zoolander's up there as well. And Happy Gilmore is, is so damn funny. Quotable as all hell. Every time I watch it, I pick up on things that uh, didn't make me laugh the first time, but came around the second or third. You got Bob Barker and him fighting. You got Shooter McGavin, a hilarious foil. A lot of good stuff in this. It's based around a sport, which already makes it just, for some reason, more fun and more exciting. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about Happy Gilmore. That, that's a gem. Night at the Roxbury. This is one that I don't ever really get heard talked about much. You got Will Ferrell in this, another great. You got Chris Kattan, who I think was um, kind of unjustly forsaken. To the Hollywood gods. He, he didn't really do anything after he had that Corky Romano movie, which nobody saw and bombed miserably. After that, he just completely fell away. I, I know he was a reoccurring character on the TV show The Middle for a while, but I mean, come on, really? Will Ferrell sprang to greatness and, and uh, it's too bad the same didn't happen for his partner in Night at the Roxbury. A very funny movie. Molly Shannon's also in this from Saturday Night Live. The Dad Again... I believe from Clueless, playing a dad again. I'll never remember that guy's name. It's it's a great flick. Check out Nate the Roxbury, though. Based on a skit, of course, where they, they head Bob to, What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Really good. Office Space. This was a, a kind of a borderline indie gem that came out. Couple actors from Dodgeball, actually, in it. Swingline Stapler Milton. I think his name is Milton. The boss, Lumberg, Bill Lumberg, is the announcer at the end of Dodgeball. This movie's freaking great for the first half. I do think it kind of falls apart in the second once the plot starts to kick in. Oh yeah, Jennifer Aniston is also in this too. Sweetheart of everyone's Jennifer. An She's worldwide sweetheart, Jennifer Aniston, not just America's sweetheart. It's um, It's got a lot of good lines, very quotable film. It has some really funny scenes, like when they break the uh, printer in, out in the yard with baseball bats. They're stomping on it, spitting on it. You have the whitest dude in the world rapping to some heavy music in his car. And then he sees a black guy next to him and he rolls up his window. It, there's so many good little moments in that flick. I mentioned Tropic Thunder. Fletch. Chevy Chase. Fletch and Fletch Lives. You want to talk about deadpan humor and dry delivery? Chevy Chase, man. He's right up there with Leslie Nielsen. Thor Ragnarok. This is the only Marvel movie that's on here, even though a lot of them have com uh, comedy in them. Spider-Man No Way Home is a pretty funny flick as well. But Thor Ragnarok, it's damn good. And it's really damn funny. Chris Hemsworth did a series of shorts for Marvel that went like straight on YouTube. They were five or six minutes long. He had a roommate in them. Those things were great. And I think it really woke people up to the fact that Hemsworth is freaking funny. So they infused a lot more into it. 
the Jojo Rabbit director, which is also a pick of mine as far as recommendations go, Jojo Rabbit, a dark comedy, really hilarious stuff, based in World War II, where our little our protagonist is seen and is best friends with uh, Hitler, an imaginary Hitler that he's been brought up, you know, because he's brainwashed. He thinks Hitler's like this great, fun-loving guy. As the movie progresses, obviously he's going to learn the cold hard truth and see through the eyes of a Jewish person who knows who knows much better. But this movie, it's, it's a very t- lovely, touching little flick, feel good, but there's some bad stuff happening in it, which puts it in the dark. You know, obviously the Nazi stuff was kind of bad, so it puts it in the dark humor category for me. But as far as Thor Ragnarok goes, yeah, I think they took a character that previously was very brooding and serious and kind of uninteresting, and they really, you know, gave him a glow up. They really brought him to another level, and then they would obviously knock him down 10 more in the follow-up film, Thor Love and Thunder, where they took the comedy and went way overboard with it, removed any sort of real drama or personal stakes. Even though Hemsworth is very good at turning it on when he needs to. He can go from comedy to drama instantaneously, but when you have a script that's so lazy and so full of humor at every turn, there's just nowhere to really go. Last on the list, I mentioned dark comedies. I like dark comedies. Those are kind of still happening, more so on TV than in movie theaters, but I got Cable Guy on here, as I mentioned, with Jim Carrey, Ben Stiller, Matthew Broderick, The Suicide Squad, James Gunn. James Gunn's really good at comedies and dramas and all that stuff as well. Guardians of the Galaxy, also very funny. The first two. The third one has a lot of humor in it, but it's it's still, it's a lot more dire. It's a lot more serious overall. So even when the humor hits, the tone is a lot drearier. It kind of, it kind of uh, muffles the humor a little bit. But the first two Guardians are freaking great from a comedy standpoint as well. The Suicide Squad made me laugh through and through though. And I know it was more of a, it wasn't supposed to be, I don't think as funny as Guardians of the Galaxy, but something about these characters, King Shark, Polka Dot Man, Peacemaker, they all just were so silly and out there that even when they were doing serious stuff, I just couldn't help but think like, what the fuck, This this is insane. And I'm loving it. Harley Quinn is always great, too. I love I love Harley Quinn. Uh, American Psycho, a movie that some people have kind of misinterpreted, I think, over the years, especially in film, film studies, film commentary. American Psycho, uh, Christian Bale stars and narrates all the thoughts going on in his head. And this is very much a dark comedy. It's It's a pretty crazy flick, seeing this guy's insane levels of superficialness his persona really unfolding as the movie progresses his infatuation with the little things the details he really goes off about business cards for a long time and the different font treatments and the the way they're presented even when he's killing a guy he's suiting up to Huey Lewis in the news dancing around it's a twisted comedy it's really damn funny if you take it at that and not go for the serious route that I think some people mistakenly do. Um, what else? Game Night is a newer one. Not new, but it's new-ish, I guess, as far as dark comedy goes. That one's pretty fun. Jason Bateman is in it. It's, it's a little bit more, again, formulaic, but I think it gets the job done. I laughed quite a bit in that one. Horrible Bosses 2, I heard, is really funny. I didn't see it. The first one, I thought, kind of missed the mark. I was hoping for an office space type flick, but most of the time is spent outside of the office. And that was a shame for me because I like the cast in that. Both of them starred Jason Bateman. I mentioned Jojo Rabbit. Beetlejuice, Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton is actually coming back for another Beetlejuice all these years later because, of course, why not? Why no other writer is going to be in it as well, playing the mom? I think uh, Olivia, I, what the hell's her name? Uh, she's the new hotness that's everywhere. The new Scream chick. She did the dumb dance that was on TikTok for a long time. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy Beetlejuice quite a bit. I watched it not that long ago and really had a good time with it all over again. 
Uh, I put underrated comedies, The Ref. I've mentioned this on the show before as well, but I want to bring out The Ref. It's a really funny movie set around the holidays. Um, you got stand-up comedian who I'm forgetting the name of now. Why am I forgetting? Now I gotta look it up. The, the Ref, IMDb. It's gonna come to me right before I click. Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary. He was in that firefighter show for many years. Dennis Leary. Kevin Spacey. He. It, it's about a burglar who is on the verge of getting busted. So he breaks into a neighboring house, kidnaps the two adults there, and they drive him crazy because they're on the verge of a divorce and it just make his life a living hell. And as the movie unwinds, they learn more about each other. And it, it's just a great movie for the holidays. If you're looking for something a little dark, but funny, check that out. And speaking of holidays, I, I noted it, but I don't think I mentioned him. The man, the myth, the legend, John Hughes, R.I.P. He made some of the greatest comedies. I said Ferris Bueller earlier, but he also did Home Alone 1 and 2, Uncle Buck, The Breakfast Club, Weird Science. He, he wrote and produced and directed a bunch of great films from the late 80s, early 90s. He died way too young, but man, I, Home Alone 1 and 2, I watch every single year still. They never get old for me. I laugh my ass off. Ferris Bueller's the same way. Uncle Buck, I used to be able to quote a stupid amount of that movie. John Candy was brilliant in that flick. Everything about that movie works. There's not a bad spot in the film. Absolutely watch Uncle Buck if you haven't. It, it, it's sad that it doesn't get talked about enough. I think to round things out... I got favorite comedians on here. I mentioned Leslie Nielsen already. I mentioned Bill Murray, who's also really funny in Royal Tenenbaum. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's in that, but uh, Rushmore. I love Bill Murray and Rushmore. Murray has, he can do the deadpan humor, but he also can do the over-the-top wild humor in movies like uh, Groundhog's Day or... What is, the, what is the horror one? The horror holiday one. I'm really having a hard time right now. There's too many movies running through my head that when I'm trying to speak and think at the same time, it's just not connecting at all. Scrooged. See, I talked myself into it. <laughs> He's really over the top in Scrooged and it works really well there. Uh, Jim, Jim Carrey. Insanely versatile actor. I don't think people realized it at the time because he was doing the silly stuff like Ace Ventura and Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, both great flicks. Then he did um, Dumb and Dumber, which is another favorite of mine. Maybe the most quotable movie ever made. He and Jeff Daniels are brilliant in that film. He then went to Cable Guy, which I think threw people for a loop because he was playing a wildly different character. Not the silly over-the-top character, but more of this dark, disturbing <laughs> weirdo. And he was hilarious. But then he would go on to do Truman Show, which also was a brilliant film, but it wasn't funny in the laugh out loud ways that these other movies were that he's done. So he really, he really has range on him. And of course, he's recently done Sonic and he did some shitty ones like Mr. Popper's Penguins. And he would do the horror thing with 23 and he would do the drama with the Majestic. The guy really can handle it all. And he elevates the scripts more than not. Sometimes it doesn't work, but for the most part, you get a spotless mind out of Jim Carrey more times than you don't. Uh, Chevy Chase, I mentioned, Fletch, obviously, Christmas Vacation, all the, all the vacation films, he is, he's very much golden. And then Chris Farley went way too soon. I don't even think he hit 40. He might have been early 40s, but talk about a, oh, talk about such a waste of talent. The guy was hilarious on SNL obviously Tommy Boy Tommy Boy 2 aka Black Sheep I don't know why it's not Tommy Boy 2 it's basically the same thing with the same characters regardless it's good for some laughs <laughs> Beverly Hills Ninja not so much <laughs> it's probably watchable but I don't think it's very good Will Ferrell, I brought up, you know, he's in movies like Step Brothers, Night at the Roxbury. I like when he cameos and things out of nowhere. Uh, he's really funny in Old School, Hank the Tank. 
And then uh, Ben Stiller, who I've, I've brought up several times during this, so we don't need to go into any further details. I mentioned how TV shows have done more with the comedy. I think that's really where things have gone. You know, people always say, oh, you can never make this movie today, or you can never do this today. Uh, da, da, da. You really can. It's just maybe not financially as, as uh, tangible for studios. It's not that you can't do it because they're going to get people triggered or outraged. That usually comes with a good price tag. Usually when people get upset, the movie does well. Now, Dead I should have put Deadpool on here. Deadpool's really funny. Now, shout out to Deadpool while I'm losing track of thought. But they are doing crazy, raunchy, over-the-top, inappropriate stuff all the time on TV shows. People just don't care enough to, I guess, get outraged about them. South Park still exists. They're still pushing the envelope all the time. They're probably still getting sued all the time. Who knows? You have uh, shows like The Righteous Gemstones, uh, done by Danny McBride. I just finished the new season. It's freaking great. Check it out. If you haven't watched the show, Righteous Gemstones stars Danny, DeV uh, Danny DeVito, Danny McBride, um, John Goodman, Adam something, the guy from Workaholics. I always want to say Adam Levine. Adam Devine, I think is his name. He's really funny. There's a bunch of characters in this that really put in a good performance. It's shot right where I'm at in South Carolina, so that's another thing that was is really fun about it. Although, when I started watching, I was in Minnesota, so that's not like a bias thing for me. That's just an extra perk. But Righteous Gemstones follows a family of... I, I don't want to say grifters. I mean, I think the parents are. The kids are just more stupid. and the, In order to be a grifter, in my eyes, you have to willingly be screwing people over where I don't think the gemstones do that. I think they ignorantly screw people over because they're so selfish and lack empathy. So it doesn't come off to them as being truly evil. They just genuinely don't know any better. <laughs> and that's what makes it such a fun watch. But yeah, it's about mega it's about this family that has a series of mega churches and they have, you know, they own basically half of the damn country and they have their hands in the pockets of politicians. And it's really funny the stuff that they do and, and the hijinks they get into. And it is wildly inappropriate. They say a lot of terrible things. They do a lot of awful things. And it's very funny. Always Sunny in Philadelphia is still going. They very much push the envelope as well. Curb your enthusiasm. I, I mean, there's not enough great things I can say about Larry David and the show that he's been making for the last 15 years or however long it's been. Uh, yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm continues to impress me every single season. So yes, it, it is sad that the comedies in theaters pretty much are non-existent. It's rare when we get one. It's a shame. I, I miss them. But I am at least thankful that we still have it coming out on TV. Of course, it's not the same, though. I would love to get another road trip. I'd love to get another Austin Powers, but not an Austin Powers 4. Mike Myers is in no shape for Austin Powers 4. <laughs> He's going to have to hit the bow flex if he wants to make this happen. And on that note, why don't you flex your opinion in the comments? If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for joining me. That's my. Those are my thoughts, like a, a quick barfing of tons of information tons of movies for you to maybe check out if you haven't heard of them i hope you know maybe i gave you one or two to to at least check into um, i'm sure that i screwed up a lot of things which is fine i don't claim to be an expert at movies i'm just a fan i'd like to think that i'm talking to uh, you know strangers obviously but like-minded strangers where at least you can appreciate that I'm trying to put in the effort to be knowledgeable and to be somewhat insightful and to, you know, just have a damn conversation in a positive way about movies that I love and grew up with and uh, maybe they spark some interest. All right, let me know. Comment below if you're on YouTube. If you're new here somehow and stumbled upon this, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I post tons of movie content each and every week with a new podcast every single Monday. It's on Spotify and on uh, Apple. I always, right when I get to Apple, for some reason it never clicks. It's, it's on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts. It goes up at 9 a.m. over there. So you get it early if you listen. If you watch, I usually do a watch along with you. Monday's around 1130. 
That, that's where I like to live with the podcast. Have my lunch, listen in, see how much I screwed up on, to chat with you in the sidebar, and uh, yeah, it's a good time. So it's, it's a lot of fun. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, or you can support the channel right here via YouTube. There's a join button. Uh, I would appreciate it a lot. YouTube doesn't pay out a lot. So the fan funding, the fan support is always a good time. All right. Hopefully I catch you next time. Take care.